I live in a city, and that means the stars are hard to see, and the universe is easy to forget about. Our busy lives and streetlights hide away so much wonder. Wouldn't it be amazing to just switch off the lights and connect with the world beyond our own? That's what I want these videos to be, little escapes into the universe that we can all go on, regardless of whether we have clear skies, telescopes, or lots of free time. We're going to go on a journey into the starry sky above me, a world we can all connect with. But this is not a video about the universe, because this isn't the universe, not really. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to leave the universe alone, but I'm going to switch one thing off. So that's it, the stars have all gone. I can only see one star in the night sky now. And really, it just looks like a big faint smudge. It's actually the Andromeda galaxy, but otherwise it's just blackness. All of the magic of the night has gone. Imagine a world without stars. The thing I switched off wasn't the universe, it was the Milky Way the galaxy we live in. Okay, phew, it's always good when they come back. So our night sky is actually our galaxy, the Milky Way. Our galaxy is our home, a huge swirling oasis of stars. It's so big and full of everything. It's like a mini universe all on its own. Our sun and solar system is about here, a third to a halfway out from the center, depending on how you measure where the edge is. Some people point to the cloudy line across the night sky on a really clear night and call that the Milky Way. And technically it is, but then so is everything else as well. So it's a little confusing. I think a better way to describe that is the disk of the Milky Way. And we're inside that disk. If I make the Milky Way two football pitches wide here and tilt it a little, then shuffle it back so it's where we are in the galaxy, if you take a look from my point of view, I'm going to walk to where the Earth is. When I look towards the center of the Milky Way, I can see this cloudy line that stretches across. When I look to the sides, I'm looking away from the galaxy, so there are fewer stars. So that's what that line is in the sky, the edge of the galaxy that we're inside. And that line is brightest looking towards the center of the galaxy. But look, there's no point in looking at a model of the Milky Way this big. It's not big enough to see the detail. I need to make it bigger. I'm going to need to make it the diameter of the United States of America. If the center of our galaxy were in Kansas, right in the middle, the solar system would be about here, in the city of Denver in Colorado. In fact, all of the stars that we can see in the night sky would only stretch as far as the city lights of Denver. So how big would we be? How big is the sun on this huge scale? Well, on a scale where the galaxy we live in is the diameter of America, the sun would be about this big. So that's already completely crazy, but it doesn't end there. Because I'm not standing on a hill here. On a scale where the Milky Way is the size of the United States, our giant sun would easily fit between the ridges of the fingerprint on the tips of our fingers. It would be half the size of a red blood cell. Our galaxy is astonishingly large. I've shrunk myself down 50,000 times to be this size. This is a single grain of sand in comparison. It's taken me two minutes to walk over to where Earth is, here, one fingerprint ridge away. Here's our little blue marble. On this scale, it's three times smaller than the coronavirus. Jupiter here was four more ridges away. Neptune, the last planet, has taken me an hour to walk to. It's just one centimeter away at the edge of my fingertip. Isn't it crazy, but wonderful, that if our galaxy were shrunk down to the size of a continent, the orbits of the planets of the solar system 
would be the swirls on the tip of our finger. We're always interested in how big the universe is, but the galaxy we live in, the Milky Way, is so wonderfully vast and impressive. Now I know the Milky Way alone is so much to take in. It's natural that it can all seem overwhelming. It can also make us feel a little small and insignificant. And we are a little small, but we are also special. Humans are incredibly complex life. We are the first beings we know of, with a curiosity and ability to find truth and wonder. That makes you just as important as a galaxy. In the words of one of my favorite wonders of the universe, Carl Sagan, we are a way for the universe to know itself. And if the galaxy still feels overwhelming, this might help. We are small, but we're probably a lot bigger than you think. We tend to put ourselves at the bottom of the scale, but that ignores the universe under our noses. The world of the small is as vast as the stars, and that is an accurate statement. This is an electron. It is very small. I've made it bigger here, obviously. It's part of an atom. It's so small it's considered a point, not a sphere. So this is just a crude model of a kind of maximum size of an electron. With that in mind, in terms of scale, an electron is to a human what a human is to the Milky Way. So if you ever feel lost or small when you contemplate the cosmos, just remember that to an electron, you are a galaxy. If you enjoyed the videos on my Epic Spaceman channel, hitting the subscribe button would be awesome. I've started a Patreon too under the same name. So thank you to this little space crew for already helping me make these videos. I also wanted to say a big thank you to Reddit and RSpace in particular. I just wouldn't have made this video if it wasn't for the amazing comments and support on my last video. Thank you. So I hope to see you again for another Epic Spaceman video.